present is His Excellency Isala Virakun, Secretary General of the SARC. To begin the program, I have the honor to invite the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, for his introductory remarks and thereafter for conducting the proceedings. Excellency, Namaskar. I would like to thank you all for joining this special interaction. I especially thank our friend Prime Minister Oli, who has joined us almost immediately after his recent surgery. I wish him a speedy recovery. I would also like to congratulate President Ashraf Ghani for his recent re-election. I welcome the new Secretary General of SAR, who is also with us today. I also acknowledge the presence of the Director of the SAR Disaster Management Center from Gandhinagar. Excellencies, as we all know, COVID-19 has recently been classified by the World Health Organization, WHO, as a pandemic. So far, our SARC region has listed fewer than 150 cases. But we need to remain vigilant. Our SARC region is home to nearly one-fifth of all humanity. It is densely populated. As developing countries, all of us have significant challenges in terms of access to healthcare facilities. Our people-to-people -people ties are ancient and our societies are deeply interconnected. Therefore, we must all prepare together. We must all act together. And we must all succeed together. Excellencies, as we prepare to face this challenge, let me briefly share India's experience of combating the spread of this virus so far. Prepare, but do not panic, has been our guiding mantra. We were careful to not underestimate the problem but also to avoid knee-jerk reactions. We have tried to take proactive steps, including a graded response mechanism. We started screening entry into India from mid-January itself, while also gradually increasing restrictions on travel. The step-by-step -step approach has helped avoid panic. We have increased our public awareness campaigns on TV, print and social media. We have made special efforts to reach out to vulnerable groups. We have worked to quickly ramp up capacity in our system, including through training our medical staff across the country. We have also increased diagnostic capabilities. Within two months, we moved from one major facility for pan-India testing to more than 66 such, such labs. And we have developed 
protocols for each stage of managing this pandemic. For screening at entry points, contact tracing of suspected cases, quarantine and management of isolation facilities, and for discharge of cleared cases. We also responded to the call of our people abroad. We evacuated nearly 1400 Indians from different countries. We also similarly helped some of the citizens of our neighboring countries. We have now built our, a, a protocol for such evacuations, including carrying out testing by our mobile teams deployed abroad. We recognize that other countries would be also concerned about their citizens in India. So, we beep foreign ambassadors about the states, uh, about the steps we were taking. Excellencies, we fully recognize that we are still in an unknown situation. We cannot predict with certainty how the situation will unfold despite our best efforts. You must also be facing similar concerns. This is why it would be most valuable for all of us to share our perspectives. I look forward to hearing your views. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now request His Excellency President Ghani to share his thoughts with us. solid is melting into thin air. We are in unknown territory and our vulnerability, Excellency, comes from our openness. Our greatest vulnerability is that we have an open border with Iran, one of the major centers, and the flow cannot be stopped. And the province of Iraq has become the central node uh, for, for preventing the spread and diffusion of this deadly disease to the rest of South Asia. I have the following five proposals. One, modeling of diffusion impacts and scenarios for management. Unless we model the diffusion, uh, we will be facing Assumptions from China or the United States or Iran are not suitable to our situation. I request the task force of SARC to be able to do this. Second, telemedicine, because the second and third order impact of this, particularly on poor and vulnerable in women, is very significant. If we could create a common framework for telemedicine, for diagnosis of related issues and as advances take place, how to be able to coordinate. Third, as a landlocked country, which is simultaneously uh, the heart of Asia, closeness, closing of borders were essential, will result in significant problems regarding the availability of medicine, food, and basic goods. Can we coordinate to be able to create controlled flows that both allows transactions to take place uh, while focusing on the essentials? The fourth issue for us, Excellencies, because uh, in all Excellencies, 
because we've cancelled schools, prayers have been stopped. How do we keep women, youth and children occupied? Since India in particular and South Asia are leaders in distance education in South learning. Can the South satellite in India satellite be made available so we can keep people because social distancing that is necessary uh, cannot just take place. In my fifth proposal, uh, Prime Minister, distinguished Prime Minister, since India is both a very important member of SARC and a member of the Shanghai Council, Cooperation Council, in Shanghai, both with China, that is our deepest sympathies in Iran, can we coordinate between SARC and the Shanghai Cooperation Council through your initiative? How much of the experience of China is replicable to our situations, and how do we both learn and help Iran? I thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, our conditions, being one of the poorest countries and conflict prone, require learning, particularly from how you upscale uh, the existing program. We have a program across the country called Health, that is basic health. And if there are other countries that have upgraded their basic systems to cope with this, we'll be extremely grateful for learning and yet sharing our experience. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now request His Excellency, President Soli, to make his remarks. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon. I too wish to begin by thanking Prime Minister Modi for this timely call for a regional initiative to combat the increasing threat of COVID-19 in the Sark region. In times of crisis, we do come together. In 2003, for example, when the region faced the threat of SARS, the Maldives took the initiative and hosted an extraordinary meeting of SARC health ministers that adopted a regional common strategy for tackling the virus. No country on its own can succeed in combating the virus. It requires a shared response at an unprecedented scale. The first COVID-19 case was confirmed in the Maldives on 7 March. To date, there are 13 confirmed cases. Fortunately, no deaths so far. Since January this year, the Maldives has been taking steps to get ready for a possible outbreak. We set in place standard operational procedures and facilities for treatment and quarantine in various islands. In the event of major outbreak in the country, our health facilities will have to cope with the care needed for both our residents and the thousands of tourists who visit the Maldives every year. Our priority now is to use precautionary measures to contain the virus as much as possible so as not to overburden our limited resources. The unique geography of the Maldives will always present itself both as an opportunity as well as a challenge. The dispersed islands make it easier for us to isolate communities whenever there is a suspected case. But in the event that a person tests positive in the outer islands and is seriously ill, requiring specialist care, the person has to be transported to the capital, Mali. This is extremely costly and puts enormous pressure 
on an overstretched team of healthcare workers. Our tertiary hospitals in the regions are currently under development. Shortage of healthcare professionals in general and shortage of specialist doctors in particular are always major challenges. And in a crisis such as this, these challenges are several times greater. The Maldives is fortunate to have received general assistance from India. And I convey my government's appreciations to Prime Minister Modi and the people of India. We have received medicine and a visiting medical relief team to work with Maldivian healthcare professionals. Excellencies, in the Maldives, the virus is showing in the most destructive measure the country's vulnerabilities to external shocks. Tourist arrivals started to decline considerably several weeks before the first case was reported. In February this year, arrivals declined by 14.3%. And in the first 10 days of this month, arrivals have already declined by 22.8%. The decline in tourist arrivals has now become so sharp that if the current trend continues, we will have a 35% drop this year. Any significant decline in tourist arrivals has a ripple effect on the Maldives economy. Tourism contributes over a quarter of the country's GDP and is the source of well over two thirds of foreign currency to the country. Every other job creating and revenue generating activity in the country is either directly or indirectly dependent on the tourism industry. Our industry is also deeply linked to many businesses and supply chains within Sark region who will feel, who will feel the no con effects from the downtown downturn in the Maldives. China and Italy are the most severely affected countries of the virus, and they are also the number one and number three source markets for Maldives tourists. Since the beginning of February, in the case of China and March in the case of Italy, Arrivals from these two countries have been restricted. As a result of this decline, the Maldives is now facing a serious shortfall in foreign currency earning, estimated to be at US dollar 450 million. If the foreign currency shortfall continues, it will have a detrimental impact on the Maldives economy which has an extremely high dependency on imports. The revenue and foreign currency shortfall are also seriously hampering the government's ability to respond to COVID-19 rapidly. The decline means serious shortage in total government revenue. Current estimates show that if tourist arrivals continue to decline, Maldives will be looking at a shortfall in government revenues between US to the 135 to 135.9 million and US to the 446.6 million this year. I am therefore in full agreement with Prime Minister Modi on the need to formulate a comprehensive regional strategy. Such a strategy should, we believe, compromise three key elements. First, we should create space for closer cooperation between the health emergency agencies to ensure that the countries in SARC have unhindered exchanges of information about the virus and best practices. Second, there is a profound need to formulate an economic relief package targeted to the affected countries. Third, 
A comprehensive regional strategy to fight COVID-19 should include a long-term recovery plan for the region. I will be happy to speak further on these elements in the discussion. Thank you, Prime Minister Modi. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Now I request His Excellency, President Raj Paksha, to share his thoughts. Good evening, Excellencies. First, I must thank Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, for initiating this uh, video conference to share our experiences, our ideas, and best practices, and also to understand the challenges we face and further discuss what measures to be taken to combat this deadly coronavirus. Our biggest challenge is to stop or minimize the virus entering into Sri Lanka and control the spreading of the virus within Sri Lanka. For this purpose, we have banned tourists and other people entering Sri Lanka, especially uh, from EU countries and also South Korea, Iran. Following the, we did this following the guidelines and statistics relating to the spread of the virus issued by the World Health Program Organization. We have also taken steps because we have a large number of Sri Lankans working in, especially in Italy and South Korea. Uh, we cannot stop our Sri Lankans coming back to their home country. We have therefore taken all steps to subject those returning to Sri Lanka to a 14-day quarantine period in uh, selected quarantine centers. As it is important to restrict social gatherings, we have advanced the usual April school holidays to commence from 11th March. Further, we have closed all universities and other educational institutes, also with the aim of minimizing social interaction. Our first case was reported in Sri Lanka was a Chinese lady tourist who since has been cured and already left Sri Lanka. The first Sri Lanka to be infected was a tour guide who had contracted the virus from a few Italian tourists who have already left the country. At present, we have 11 cases being treated in the hospital. There have been no deaths reported so far. We have a, a specialized infectious diseases hospital, IDH, close to Colombo uh, with intensive care facilities. This hospital has successfully treated even the first case reported. In all other hospitals designated to treat any suspected cases or coronavirus cases proposed proper personal protective equipment is used. We have also requested those who are sh who show uh, flu symptoms to seek urgent uh, medical attention 
and also self-quarantine themselves. Close associates of these persons showing any flu symptoms have also been strongly advised to be subject to self-quarantine. Quarantine. The area police and the public health inspectors are closely monitoring the progress of the suspected patients. Public health inspectors undertake daily visits to check on these persons who are self-quarantined. We have also established a national task force comprising all major stakeholders with the power and authority to take crucial decisions have been set up and uh, meet on a daily basis with close and constant monitoring of all aspects relating to the spread of this deadly virus. A 24-7 office with hotlines has been established to coordinate all activities related to battling the spread of the virus, quarantine and testing and treatment of suspected and confirmed cases. Government of Sri Lanka has taken some additional steps to effectively meet this unforeseen disaster. The Department of Health started giving out health warnings and advice on precautionary measures needed to be followed for prevention of the spread of the virus. This is done through mass media, presidential media division, press briefings, press bulletins, etc. General public were educated not to go for panic, buying of face masks, hand sanitizers, etc. This was quite effective. Twelve hospitals were declared as suitable for caring of possible coronavirus affected cases across the country. Managing of stocks of personal protective equipment, such as masks, gloves, sanitizers, and other medical items required for treatment of patients also started. Since the high risk area for the coronavirus was the city of Wuhan in Mumbai province in China. There was a requirement to evacuate 34 Sri Lankan students and their families back to Sri Lanka. This was done by the National Carrier Sri Lanka Airlines, which flew from Colombo to Wuhan and back to Colombo with all 34 passengers. These 34 students on arrival were immediately quarantined by the Sri Lanka Air Force before they were taken to a military facility in the Central Hills for quarantine for 14 days under the supervision of the Army medical team. None of them contracted the virus and all were sent home on completion of the 14 days quarantine period. At the same time, another 750 Sri Lankans were studying in various universities in different provinces of China and the government facilities. They were returned back to Sri Lanka. These students were instructed to be in self-quarantine for 14 days under the supervision and monitoring by lo local health authorities. As you know, probably that our parliament has been dissolved on 2nd March and the general elections will be held on 
is 25th April. So the nominations are being accepted from 12th March up to 19th March. Therefore, we have to take precautions to discourage large meetings, large gatherings. But the elections will be held as planned. When the World Health Organization, WHO, declared COVID-19 pandemic and indicated that fundamental public health interventions can still limit the spread of the virus and drive down cases even where it was transmitted widely. Advisories were issued for travelers and precautionary measures were taken by limiting travel overseas of Sri Lankans unless it is essential to do so. Almost all major sporting events, international conferences, meeting large gatherings have been postponed or cancelled. All schools, universities and other educational establishments, including preschools throughout the country, has been closed for particular periods ranging from two weeks to six weeks. Even gatherings for religious purpose have been stopped by respective religious leaders initially for two weeks. Also, insurance of on-arrival visas has been suspended for all countries. Travel advisories sent to airlines not to uplift passengers from several countries, mostly from EU countries. Travel advisories also sent that any passenger coming from countries which we have defined will be quarantined for 14 days in Sri Lanka. Sanitizing of public transport also uh, commenced from two days back. So as because of these reasons, our economy has taken a severe blow due to the coronavirus, particularly in tourism. Most of our tourists are from Italy, Germany and other EU countries. And now there is a ban on the coming. Our tourist industry was just recovering after last year's April 21st terrorist attack. Our exports are also adversely affected. Therefore, I strongly recommend the SARC leaders to formulate a mechanism to assist our economies to tide over this very difficult period. I also wish to recommend that a SAR ministerial level group be established to discuss, share best practices, and coordinate regional matters on combating corona virus. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now call upon Her Excellency Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to share her thoughts. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all the SARC leaders. First of all, I thank Prime Minister Modi for taking this initiative. I also thank for bringing and hosting 23 of our students from Wuhan along with Indian students during the quarantine period. We need to devise a strong self-wide strategy to fight this public health threat and to protect our citizens. 
we successfully prevented entry of the virus through strong surveillance and rigorous checkup at all international airports, sea ports, and land ports. As of now, we had only three COVID-19 imported cases. They have already recovered. There are two new imported cases from Europe. We have no local or community transmission of any COVID-19 case. We have set up a national committee to provide guidance to concern people from all ministries at all levels. We have also undertaken massive awareness raising campaigns everywhere in Bangladesh through all available medias, including social media. My party workers at all levels are active in awareness raising. Local body representatives are vigilant to enforce home quarantine if necessary. We have kept four newly built hospital, including the Kuwait Madri Hospital in Dhaka, dedicated to exclusively deal with COVID-19 patients. In addition, there is no, there is one more hospital in Russia to exclusively handle COVID-19 patients. We have also earmarked separate beds in every hospital in all the uh, in all districts to treat COVID-19 patients. A few vacant buildings have been identified where makeshift hospitals can be established in case there is any such need. We also have trained health workers at Upojala levels. School children are also being trained to follow necessary personal hygiene. We have stockpiles of testing kits, infrared thermometers, isolation gowns, and masks. Excellencies, I have some proposals that all third countries need to cooperate and collaborate closely to fight this pandemic. We need to force collaboration through our collective capacity, expertise, and resources. We are ready to share our capacity and expertise as well as the best practice with the third countries, including providing logistic support if required. To continue this dialogue at technical level, our health ministers, health secretaries, and relevant health experts can also have this kind of video conferences to discuss specific areas of cooperation. WHO Southeast Asia Regional Director may be invited to these video conferences. We believe it is extremely important to establish an institution to prevent and fight against any public health threats in South Asian region in future. In our third charter, it is already there about the health care. So we can work together for future and in future any problem arise, we can work together and we can exchange or share our experience. And Bangladesh will be happy to host such institution if you kindly all if you all kindly agree. Excellency, I really thank you very much, especially Prime Minister Modi, to take the initiative and also I appreciate that after a long time all the third leaders get together. So it's a very crucial time for all of us. So we have to think about our people, people's you know goodwill. So I hope that this will show a new dimension or path to help our people, peoples of all our country and all the region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now request His Excellency, Prime Minister Oli, to make his remarks.
Right Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi Ji, distinguished heads of state and government of SARC member states, Namaste and good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi Ji for taking this important and timely initiative, which I warmly welcome. Our collective wisdom and efforts will help us devise a sound and robust strategy for the Sark region as we fight the COVID-19 pandemic. I wish to thank Prime Minister Modi ji and all the distinguished leaders of Sark member states for kind words and best wishes on my SPT recovery. Even though we had detected one suspected important case, imported case, but the COVID-19 test proved negative. Yet we are aware of the high risk of possible outbreak at any time. We remain alert from preventing it. We have taken several measures to enhance our preparedness. Our efforts at the moment are geared towards preventing this disease to enter into our country. Our national efforts, I am personally overseeing and guiding the government efforts. Multi-agency coordination committees have been set up at the center, provinces, and local levels to mobilize government efforts in the synergetic manner. We have restricted international movements, visa and arrival facility for all foreigners and non-resident Nepalese with foreign passport has been suspended. Movement of this country, uh, movement of third country nationals via land routes has been suspended. Short test PRC health certificate is made mandatory to obtain visa from Nepali missions award for essential travels to Nepal. We have suspended issuance of work permit for Nepali nationals for overseas employment. International passengers are required to go through the screening process at the health desk at the international air. There are provisions for self-quarantine for certain categories of travelers we are strengthening quarantine facilities in all provinces, hospitals, and arranged isolation wards and intensive wards for treatment. We are, we are enhancing capacity of hospitals. Health workers are being provided with personal protect, protective equipment and necessary uh, incentives to motivate them. All the permits for mountaineering expedition for spring 2020 have been suspended and all major international conferences have been postponed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Now I call upon His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Lote Shering, who is an experienced surgeon. Prime Minister Shering, we are all keen to hear you. 
प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू एक्सलेंसी बिफोर आई स्टार्ट आई वुड लाइक टू टेक दिस ऑपरचुनिटी टू कन्वे माइ किंग्स ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल द हेड्स ऑफ द स्टेट्स एंड हेड्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट्स हियर एज वी स्पीक माइ किंग इज आउट ऑफ द कैपिटल he is in the district places ensuring healthcare services ensuring covid-19 surveillance system and trying to motivate uh, our healthcare services and service providers as well as asking all the people of bhutan to be on the same page when this pandemic strikes bhutan so with this uh, i also would like to take this opportunity to express my king's greetings and greetings of all of us to prime minister oli for his speedy recovery and similarly we also would like to wish uh, prime minister hasina for her father's uh, 100th birthday celebration in few days so with this i would like to thank prime minister modi for your excellent leadership to bring all of us together because togetherness is required at all times but when the whole world is fighting one common disease that we cannot see with our naked eyes i think it's very important that all of us come together and leave behind our differences and number 2 i think uh, it is very important that we communicate very clearly on this communicate between all the leaders of the world communicate between central government with uh, local government communicate with the health planners and the people of the nations so i think uh, this is very timely and i would like to thank uh, uh, prime minister modi ji for your excellent uh, uh, leadership on this to tell my colleagues on the on the experience of bhutan on the lone uh, covid 19 positive that we had it was the 5th of uh, this month uh, last 5th of uh, march evening we had one lone imported case a bhutan lover a bhutan visitor who wanted to visit bhutan uh, came to bhutan and then on the third day of his visit he showed some very abnormal sign symptoms and then on suspicion we we found out that he was uh, covid 19 uh, positive by evening yet we wanted to confirm it and the confirmatory test came just before midnight around 11:30 pm by then our health officials uh, had all gathered uh, in the ministry even uh, my king also came to the ministry and we all started because we knew that uh, we had the first confirmed positive case so throughout the night we worked very hard our surveillance system that was already in place uh, was initiated activated overnight and starting midnight till 7 uh, am the coming morning that is 6th of march we had we managed to trace the whole path of the first positive case we managed to identify all the 48 uh, uh, primary contacts we managed to send all the uh, contact traces and surveillance team to their respective places and inform them of the uh, importance of house quarantine that first morning and then as uh, uh, the day day unfolded we managed to pull them out and bring them to the formally identified quarantine uh, facilities so over 7 uh, 8 hours we managed to identify all 48 primary contacts from three different uh, parts of the country wherever our tourists had visited and we also managed to manage to initiate uh, the medical team that we had identified uh, to treat uh, in case if he had a positive case and then he was isolated and uh, treatment started and it all happened because our health ministry under our minister dichens leadership everything was planned beforehand and then the king was also our king was also awake the whole night trying to coordinate the whole thing and bring all the primary contacts together so uh, we do not wish to have positive cases in any countries but uh, to have a positive case in this manner and to be able to identify all the primary contacts and isolate them i thought was a huge success uh, that we brought in then starting from there we managed to treat him take care of him very very well and his family wanted uh, the patient back home so uh, he was successfully air evacuated day before yesterday and he reached his hometown uh, uh, last night actually so uh, we wish him a speedy recovery all uh, the people of bhutan uh, send our uh, sincere prayers for his speedy recovery but the fact is since as we all uh, know and as uh, uh, all the heads of the country i uh, uh, shared here this is this is a uphill task because we really don't see our enemy this uh, uh, a pandemic that is uh, uh, challenging all of us do not follow geographical boundaries that's why as i said we it's very important for all of us to be on the same page 
And uh, as we all know that it affects uh, the elderly people and it affects more people with comorbid conditions. So similarly, the aftermath of this uh, uh, disease will also affect the smaller and vulnerable economies more hardly than the better ones. So we are equally concerned that as we fight and as we try to contain this disease, we are also concerned about the economic outcomes of this uh, disease. So therefore, I would like to uh, support all the proposals that were made before me and also to be very, very sure that we all will share our limited resources that we have, share the technologies that we have, and also to have frequent such meetings so that uh, with the changes in time and with the changes of the demand of this pandemic, we also come and regroup ourselves. And I also would like to propose that uh, we must have a similar cooperation in economic uh, up, get up on this issue because all the smaller economies are disproportionately hit. So with this, I'm sure uh, my other colleagues will have a lot of points to share. And I also will, would like to contribute as the discussion goes on. So as of now, I would like to thank uh, all the heads of the states and heads of the countries and governments, as well as Prime Minister Modi for your initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Now I call upon His Excellency, Dr. Jafar Mirja, who also has medical experience to share his thoughts. Rahim and assalamu alaikum to honorable heads of state and government and secretary general Saak. First of all, I would like to wish good health to His Excellency Prime Minister of Nepal. Your Excellencies, the COVID-19 pandemic is one of the most serious global health emergencies witnessed in the last 100 years. At the same time, when it has been characterized as a global pandemic, it is deemed controllable as well, provided timely and appropriate public health measures are put in place. With over 155,000 infections, 5,833 8, 5, deaths, and 138 countries involved, no nation and no region on earth can afford to be unresponsive. Least of all, SARC which is home to one-fifth of the humanity, several of the world's largest megacities, and many of the most densely populated regions. Pakistan shares the common concern over the potential of COVID-19 affecting South Asia. All our countries now have confirmed cases. Mercifully, the Sark region has so far evaded the worst ravages but given the experience of other countries in other continents, there is absolutely no room for any complacency. While hoping for the best, we have to prepare for the worst. The World Health Organization's four-pronged advice offers a reasonable way forward. Namely, A, prevent, B, detect, C, respond, and also the conduct research and innovation along the way. Excellencies, Pakistan has been involved in containment efforts right from the outset of the outbreak. We have been alert to the dangers and have put in place appropriate public health measures and developed required protocols and guidelines for the safety of our people. We have been matching our measures to real-time risk assessments. While we have stressed the need for prevention and caution, we have strongly advised against panic. A calm, calculated, and deliberate response is the need of the hour. Pakistan was among the first few countries to undertake a joint external evaluation for the state of preparedness to cope with health emergencies in the context of International Health Regulations 2005 in close collaboration with World Health Organization, we have been taking steps to appropriately restrict movement to and from the affected countries, regulate for flights, institute health screening measures at entry points by member states, and establish quarantine slash isolation facilities. Diagnosed cases are being isolated and contacts are being traced 
proactively. Prime Minister Imran Khan is personally overseeing these efforts. Resultantly, Pakistan has managed so far to keep the cases to a relative minimum, an achievement that WHO has recently recognized as a good practice and has commended it. National Security Committee recently convened for the first time on a national health issue chaired by the Prime Minister Imran Khan and has decided to take major steps to contain the spread of COVID-19. The four pillars of our response strategy include one, governance and financing, two, prevention, three, mitigation, and D, four, communication. We have decided, decided inter alia, one, to close all our educational institutions for three weeks, close the entire Western border for two weeks, restrict international flights to, th to three airports only, and to ban all large public gatherings and reinforce screening and administrative measures at the seaports and at the ground crossings. The situation is being monitored closely and appropriate measures are being taken through a systematic consultative review process. The National Disaster Management Authority has been mandated to lead the interagency effort and command and control centers have been established at the federal and provincial levels. Effective coordination and surveillance at all levels is critically important. Excellencies, the COVID-19 pandemic forces us to think not in terms of nations and states, but as a collective. If our health systems, disease surveillance systems, and preventive measures are unable to cope, the human and economic costs alone can be staggering. The cumulative impact will dampen region-wide growth prospects and negatively affect the national development agendas. At their current stages of development, the SARC members can ill afford such a set setback. The unprecedented challenge therefore warrants an unprecedented response. We must recognize that the national and local responses still remain the, 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 the key and, and they are the most critical. It is equally important to pursue, however, evidence and science-based responses. Stigmatization and stereotyping is counterproductive. The SARC Secretariat is best placed to coordinate regional endeavors. With this in view, Pakistan proposes, like other excellencies, that the SARC Secretariat be mandated to, one, establish a working group of respective national authorities for health information and data exchange, as well as coordination for responses in real time. And two, like His Excellency President of Maldives and Her Excellency Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Pakistan would like to reiterate its earlier proposal of hosting SARC Health Ministers Conference at an appropriate time. Three, reach out on behalf of SARC countries to specialized development partners, including World Health Organization, for mobilization for technical advice and resources. Four, follow WHO guidelines and implement exit health screening for travelers in the region to avoid cross-border spread. Five, a regional mechanism is proposed to share disease surveillance data in real time about prevalence and incidence of communicable diseases and public health events of regional significance. And lastly, Learn from, the, learn from and disseminate the experience of SARC observer states, particularly China, which has effectively addressed the COVID-19 challenge despite being from where it originated. Excellencies, the challenge at hand demands sagacity, vision, and synergy of action. 
The strength and resilience of the people of South Asia is well known. We have no doubt that we will overcome these challenges. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts on the situation and the steps you have taken. We all ag agree that we are facing a serious challenge. We do not know and as yet know what shape the pandem pandemic will take in the coming days. It is clear that we have to work together. We can respond best by coming together, not growing apart. Collaboration, not confusion. Preparation, not panic. In this spirit of collaboration, let me share a few ideas on what India can offer to this joint effort. I propose we create a COVID-19 emergency fund. This could be based on voluntary contributions from all of us. India can start with an initial offer of 10 million US dollars for this fund. Any of us can use the fund to meet the cost of immediate actions. Our foreign secretaries through our embassies can coordinate quickly to finalize the utilization of this fund. We are assembling a rapid response team of doctors and specialists in India along with testing kits and other equipment. They will be on standby to be placed at your disposal if required. We can also quickly arrange online training capsules for your emergency response teams. This will be based on the model we have used in our own country to raise the capacity of all our emergency staff. We had set up an integrated disease surveillance portal to better trace possible virus carriers and the people they contacted. We could share this disease surveillance software with SARC partners and training on using this. Let us also use existing facilities like the SAR Disaster Management Center to pull in the best practices among all of us. Looking ahead, we could create a common research platform to coordinate research on controlling epidemic disease within our South Asian region. The Indian Council of Medical Research can offer help coordinating such an exercise. We can also ask our experts to brainstorm on the longer term economic consequences of COVID-19 and how we can insulate our internal trade and our local value chains from its impact. Finally, this is not the first nor the last 
such pandemic that will affect us. We can also ask our experts to brainstorm on the longer term economic consequences of COVID-19 and how we can insulate our internal trade and our local value chains from its impact. This can help to prevent such infections from spreading across our region and allows us to keep our internal movements free. I call upon His Excellency President Ghani to share his thoughts. Dr. Mirza, uh, the number of cases in Afghanistan is 16. No deaths, and as of yet, they are in five provinces. But the case I make is the following. Our refugees from Iran are being sent back in droves. I would like to make the case that dealing with this flow in the Herat province, three provinces, particularly Herat, Nimroz and Farah, is a regional challenge because thousands of people are coming from an infected area in the period in which the incubation takes place and the detection takes place. So we would like to offer particularly the Herat province, where we're making major uh, efforts as a model. In terms of organization, our National Security Council have chaired a number of times, and uh, we've created a task force under the Vice President in all the provinces. We are reorganizing our budget, etc. But let me welcome your initiative. We would like to be delighted to contribute to this voluntary fund. But the phases, Mr. Prime Minister, we would suggest we need to think about the next six months as one period where the pandemic is likely to unfold. Thank God weather is going towards warming and it's shown that there are negative consequences. But the vaccine is not likely to develop sooner than a year or to 18 months. During this period, whatever we can do in the way of prevention is necessary, but the second and third order consequences of this on our social fabric, on our economic transactions, and others really requires thinking through. The impact on poverty, which all of us and you, Mr. Prime Minister, has taken such a leading role in this, is likely to be negative. So how do we think through in ways to be able to protect the most poor and the most vulnerable? Because of that, we welcome very much your task force and ways of collaboration in return to this issue of being able to uh, deal with. The third order, issue is while all these measures, and we've resorted to the two, uh, control of uh, borders, this, the disruptive impact of this, what are ways to be able to generate economic transactions and activities, and here again, there is need for considerable thinking. Uh, we would like to support the meetings the by video conference at the ministerial level. We would like to thank the Secretariat for their vital role. Uh, but the most important issue is that both pandemics and particularly climate change are upon us and without SARC coordinating as such uh, our vulnerability will uh, increase. Uh, once again, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, let me take thank you uh, for convening this meeting and for the follow-up actions and we would always be ready and willing to collaborate and to welcome coordination 
learn from the best practice and contribute to it uh, as uh, this global crisis unfolds. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I request His Excellency President Soli to make his remarks. Thank, thank you, Prime Minister. First of all, I welcome uh, Prime Minister Modi's proposal, especially on prepare, preparation and longer term economic recovery, and to form a emergency, COVID 19 emergency fund. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, we believe that a common approach should address the following challenges. First, to ensure rapid response and sharing of experience and expert expertise. We should create space for closer cooperation between the health emergency agencies to ensure that the countries in SARC have unhindered exchanges of information about the virus and best practices. The Maldives has already received technical and material support from India, as I have highlighted earlier. I would also like to thank the government of India for evacuating nine Maldivians from Wuhan. It is time that bilateral cooperation of that nature be expanded to regional level where every country would benefit. There is a profound need to formulate an economic relief package targeted to the affected countries. In the case of the Maldives, such a package would include budget support to fill the significant shortfall in revenue gap that I mentioned earlier. Third, it is always good to plan ahead to ensure a quick and sustainable recovery after the pandemic. So we believe that we should start discussing a long-term recovery plan for the region. For the Maldives, such a plan means initiating a quick recovery in the tourism sector. It means building up our resilience through sustainable regional development and connectivity between the Maldives and major cities in the region. It also means scaling up private investment in tourist resorts and infrastructure that proposals growth in tourist arrivals, which in the Maldives means economic growth. Thank you, thank you, Prime Minister, once, once again for convening this meeting. Thank you, Excellency. I now request His Excellency President Rajpaksha to share his thoughts. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. And again, I want to thank uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, of India for convening this important video conference uh, today. And uh, we learned a lot of lessons from all the participants. And I thank all the uh, heads of state for sharing their experiences and also good practices. And also I want to thank you, Excellency, for the series of assistance that you have proposed, especially the raising fund, COVID fund. And also, uh, we all know there's a shortage of testing kits and other equipment, not only within this region, or all over the world. So thank you for offering uh, these assistance to the all the re regional countries. And also, uh, it is very important for us uh, to work together, not only uh, combating uh, COVID-19 virus, but also be prepared for similar situations in future. We have to understand that it's very important that the social awareness is very important uh, in these type of situations. Because sometimes uh, 
the people uh, will sometimes we have to take steps that uh, uh, most of sometimes the, the people can misunderstand these steps uh, therefore I think it is very important to all the time educate the citizen uh, of the steps that we have to take for the, uh, to prevent this type of uh, situation. At the same time, it is important to control the rumors and also that will lead to panic. It is important to control our borders, that is the uh, major steps that we have to take. It's a difficult one, but we have to uh, take that, uh, those measures to control effectively, uh, control the situation. And also it is very important to have one place to disseminate information to the people and also uh, to decide on steps that we take. Is, uh, otherwise it will, uh, will lead to confusion among the citizens. Again, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, President, Prime Minister of India for taking this action and uh, we hope that we can work together in future uh, to counter any uh, adverse situation. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I call upon Her Excellency uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to share her thoughts. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. And, well, thanks again for coordinating this meeting. This initiative should not end here. It should continue through our officials, also our health experts. Uh, they can work together and they can continue the discussion how we can combat uh, at present situation or the challenge of COVID-19 and other diseases. Let us not forget how we all are interconnected in today's world. Now, whole world is suffering and the whole the people, I think this is the, for the first time it happened. Because of this COVID-19, now people from, you know, everywhere, actually the whole world become very much worried about it. So the initiative within us, the South Asian country, it is excellent idea and we should find out a strategy and I really appreciate and we welcome your ideas and initiatives. I, again, I mentioned that this third official can work and they can um, activate all these ideas and also our experts can join together because I feel that we need to work together jointly in close collaboration for addressing these challenges. I feel that our joint effort, we can save our people and also we can uh, make progress in this area. So I, I feel that your proposals, we can, uh, our experts can sit together and we can, uh, you know, examine that how we can implement it and we can make progress. So I, again, I thank you very much for this initiative and I hope that together we will be able to combat this distress situation. I look forward to being in touch with you all, Excellencies, as required, and hopefully together we can ensure the safety, security of our people in this region. And again, uh, I thank you very much, and our new Sark Secretary General can coordinate the follow-up actions, which will, uh, I feel that that will be, you know, an excellent job, and Bangladesh would be happy to join all these efforts. So again, 
Prime Minister Modi ji, I thank you very much for your initiative that this holding this video conferences and uh, again I request all our officials to continue this dialogue which is very very important at this moment for our people, peoples of South Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now request His Excellency Prime Minister Oli to make his remarks. <coughs> Thank you, Excellency Narendra Modi ji, the Prime Minister of India. Our region is at high risk of COVID-19. The epidemic knows no boundary, no nationality, and no region. Therefore, we need to devise ways to combat this pandemic collectively. It is a common challenge and it demands common efforts. First thing is awareness creation. Community-based organizations and medical and non-medical volunteers could be mobilized in raising awareness and supporting government agencies. We have, a, we have to appeal to our people to avoid non-essential foreign travels and to avoid attending mass gatherings and other large-scale events. Our, our region is rich in traditional medicine. We have to encourage our people to use this asset for the prevention and treatment of this disease. Our way of greeting people with namaste rather than shaking hands can avoid potential threat of women to women transmission of this virus. I believe that our region holds a good stock of emergency medical supplies. Well-trained medical professionals and laboratory facilities. These would be deployed at the call of any member state of SAR in urgent need. The hospitals in the bordering areas could also be utilized for the screening as well as treating infected patients in coming from across the border. We may encourage hospitals, medical centers, research institutions, and health workers in the region to build a good network for sharing experiences, research findings, and best practices in critical areas associated with the prevention and treatment of this deadly disease. We need to ensure a smooth supply of essential medicine, equipment and sanitary materials in the region. We may think of developing a SARC level mechanism to deal with critical health issues such as this. Establishment of a SARC emergency medical center supported by a strong funding mechanism would be desirable. In this regard, I welcome Your Excellency Bodhiji's proposal and India's contribution. Nepal will also join soon in this point. The economic cost of this pandemic is yet to be assessed. I am sure it is going to cost all of us dearly if it is prolonged. Regional discussion on reviving our economies and supporting each other through providing easy access, establishing value chains and promoting intra-regional trade, investment, tourism and connectivity would be critically important. Thank you, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Now I call upon His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Lote Shering to share his thoughts. Thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you once again. Uh, I personally feel that this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to share our personal opinions. And uh, I also would like to take this opportunity actually to uh, thank all the healthcare uh, providers who are in the forefront uh, fighting this uh, war with the uh, unseen enemy. And I also would like to send uh, our prayers and condolences for all that their uh, thousands of lives lost. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's initiative in, in getting all of us together, as well as proposing to have uh, emergency uh, COVID-19 uh, relief fund. That would again be a wonderful uh, initiative, and Bhutan would be a very active participant to this initiative. Thank you very much. I think uh, as we fight uh, this unknown disease in the acute phase, we must also be able to go through this and see the long-term consequences of this, be it on health or on non-health uh, um, initiatives. Maybe as we fight this disease, maybe we will be able to overcome the acute problem. But what happens to the long-term consequences? What if we all developed uh, endemic to this disease? What would be the international health regulations on this? So if we can think through all this, then we will definitely uh, uh, have lesser problems uh, in the near futures to come. And also, I think uh, we must, of all, the, of all the initiatives, I would like to repeat and insist that we must be willing to share, share the limited resources th that we have. And through these limited resources, we should now be training more of our health uh, professionals at uh, a center of excellence in our region. So with this, again, uh, as we unfold, I would like to propose that we meet again and uh, as Prime Minister Modi ji uh, 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 proposed that we also have a relief fund and uh, like uh, my, other, uh, my other friends shared, I think we should have a common consensus today that let our health ministers have a forum on this and then through the SARC Secretariat, they must come up with the SOP on this proposal. So with this, I thank all the leaders here and I thank Prime Minister Modi ji for taking all this trouble to convene and uh, give us the opportunity to share our feelings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Now I call upon His Excellency, Dr. Zafar Mirza, Mirza to share his thoughts. Thank you, Your Excellency, uh, Prime Minister Modi, and uh, thank you for your uh, suggestions. Uh, I think it has been a constructive and a insightful discussion that we had today. And I hope that we can keep up the momentum. And uh, I think that it is important that in SAR countries, we give public health a chance to bring us together. Let me, as a public health person myself, say that in, health in the context of health emergencies, we need to take a proactive approach. We should not wait for emergencies to happen and outbreaks to take place and then to start our preparations. Often, all of, all of our health systems are undergoing reform in our countries. But what we forget in this reform process is that we also have to invest, uh, invest in uh, health emergencies, preparation, response, and recovery. So the, if we need to take a proactive approach there, and that's what we are now doing in Pakistan. Uh, I would also like to mention that the Sark region uh, generally uh, remains a least integrated uh, region in the world. I'm stating the obvious. The last Sark summit was held in Nepal in 2014. And uh, our health surveillance mechanisms are fragmented and necessary regional cooperation and coordination mechanisms are largely conspicuous by their absence. Um, we believe that SARC Secretariat does provide us that platform which can bring us together and we believe that we need to use this platform as a platform for pooling, for pooling of resources of all kinds including technical expertise, national experiences and even financing which can be used by all the members of the SARC uh, region. Your Excellencies, I would also like to mention that we hope that during this COVID 
uh, emergency, uh, our member countries uh, will provide and provide access to emergency assistance to the all, all our regions in our countries uh, because equity in health is a fundamental principle of public health. In this regard, let me say that it is a matter of concern that COVID-19 has been reported from Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. And in view of the health emergency, it is imperative that all lockdown in the disputed ter territory must be lifted immediately. Opening up communications and movement would facilitate dissemination of information, allow distribution of medical supplies, and enable containment and relief efforts to proceed unimpeded. Lastly, I would like to also address the point that His Excellency President Ghani made, and we understand his concern about the border crossings and their closure. I want to reassure him that we have done this for temporary, temporarily so that we can reinforce our point of entries and land crossings. And this is exactly in the light of the WHO guidelines and the steps being implemented by regional states to contain the spread of the virus. This is a temporary measure. I assure you, Pakistan remains cognizant of the Afghanistan's needs and requirements. And I assure you that the essential supplies, including food and medicine, will be allowed through as the requisite surveillance and screening mechanisms are put in place. I thank you very much. Excellencies, thank you once again for your time and your ideas. We have had a very productive and constructive discussion today. We all agree that evolving a common strategy is critical to handling such challenges. And we agreed to find cooperative solutions. We will share knowledge, 